Hey everybody, this is Dr. Michael Shearer coming here from IDS uh, Dental Show here in Cologne, Germany at the Asiga booth where I'm getting a chance to go ahead and spend some time here with Bryce. So Bryce, thanks for joining us here today. Yeah. No joke, like I'm talking to a lot of doctors here too that are saying, hey, you gotta come to Asiga and check out this thing called the Print Pod. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, hi everybody. Um, we are absolutely thrilled to announce this amazing new product here at IDS and really excited to have Dr. Michael Shear here to get you know one of the first looks here. So what, what we really wanted to do was figure out a way, how can we create the ideal all-in-one machine? You know, you see a lot of products that maybe do one thing really well and maybe do one other thing kind of well. We really wanted to solve the issue of having a machine that can do it all and do it all really, really well. So what we have here is the new Asiga Print Pods. So a lot of you might recognize the machine that we have sitting here. So this is actually just the Asiga Max 2 3D printer that a lot of you might have. Most of you have probably seen at this point. So if we take off kind of all the bells and whistles here, we just have an Asiga Max 2 printer. This is the same Max 2 machine that utilizes our normal trays, as well as the normal Asiga Max build plates. So this is just a normal printer. However, we developed the Asiga Print Pod system, which allows you, the end user, to get the adapter kit, which when put in place into the machine. Wow. Allows you to utilize the Asiga Print Pods. Now in typical Asiga fashion, we are always an open material system. So we already have a wide range of third party resin manufacturers that are already validating their materials for the print pod system. So all of the, all of the major manufacturers that we know and love um, are going to have pods available for this system. So you're not going to be limited to just the Sega materials, but all of the manufacturers that we've, that we've grown to, uh, to use and, and love their materials. So the, let's take a look at how this actually works. So once you have the adapter in place, you'll take your pod and you'll place it into the pod adapter. From here, we'll turn the dial to lock it in place, and then we'll remove the lid. The lid will go in the lid slot, and then we're ready to start the print job. Once we start the print job, just like any other print, the build plate's going to lower down, and it's going to actually magnetically attach to what we call the plunger. And this all happens automatically. It's all, it's all automatic. Cool, okay, yep. great. I'm, I'm simulating it here for us today. Awesome. But this is all an automated process. Once, it, once, that magnet, uh, once that magnet attaches to the plunger, then the print process will begin. Once it's done printing, the build plate will then lift up just like <laughs> on a normal print job. Oh, cool. And you'll see here where you can see the plunger. <clears throat> wow. And attached to the plunger, there will be a crown, uh, an inlay, an onlay, a veneer, whatever it is you've printed. Wow. And what's really amazing about this is uh, several things. So number one is the print time. So obviously, I think we all recognize that print time is a big factor in 2025. Um, depending on the material, we're seeing print times could be anywhere from six, seven minutes up to maybe 10 minutes. So very, very rapid print time. So in essence, on here, this is like a mini build platform that it's magnetically attached to the build platform. Is that, Correct. Is that a fair thing to say? Correct. So what wow. we've actually done here is we've taken this and this, the tray and the build plate and the resin, wow. and we've condensed it down into a very small area. Cool. It's simple, but it works amazingly. So tell me a little bit about, okay, so you hinted at it too. So we're gonna be printing crowns or veneers and things like that. So it's okay to do this and pull it off? You actually don't need to. Oh my goodness, tell me, show me how I would do this. Just pull, just, just take the plunger. <laughs> so right on there would be my crown. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So in essence, this is a small build platform. Yep. And now let's talk about like what I'm gonna do with this, right? So yep. I've got some material here, it's called dental tooth. And that would be my tooth I would print on here. And then I would get out of this jar like a crown or like what would be in the jar? So in the jar will actually be the material. So there will be about 10 to 15 milliliters of material in, in, okay. in the pod. Now out of this, what, what, we, what I really love about this system is that these are actually reusable. So these are not a one-time use product. Right. There's enough material to get anywhere from three to seven units out of it. Amazing. 
So the, the beauty of it is, once you've printed your crown, you'll then come over here, you can see here we have our wash pods, mm -hmm. which is just a longer pod. You'll take the lid off, you'll take the plunger, you'll insert it, put the lid back on, just give it a little shake. Just give it a little shake for maybe a minute, if that, wow. and then you're good to go. You'll take the plunger out, you'll pull the crown off, it'll go into the cure, and then you'll take your plunger, <clears throat> right back in the pod, put the lid back on, and it's ready for the next patient. So I can essentially have a one, a two, a three of these. Like you said, depends upon the size of the crown, the milliliters, but essentially, you know, up to five, seven or more uses per jar. Yep. And then, wow, that's talking about being economical as well as Very being low cost. also kind to the environment with the plastics and things of that nature too. Now let's talk about print time. So on average, I know it's hard to predict, but you know, what would you say is a fair estimate for the print time of using like a, one of the pods? Um, again, it, it wildly depends on the material. I would say if I, if I could put a, a solid guess, an estimate, around eight minutes. Amazing. So everybody, this is really pretty incredible because what we're looking at here too is, as we're thinking about also 3D printing, and this is a bit of a paradigm shift, right? So it kind of feels like all of a sudden we're going from, like you mentioned, being able to take one of my existing 3D printers, this can go on this same printer. As you saw with Rice, he popped this off, changed it back and forth, and now it can go to an individualized solution instead of pouring an entire jar into the dish. Exactly. So in essence, it's a little bit, I mean, not to use a brand name, but it's a little bit kind of like a K-cup or like the curd pods that we would kind of look at for like making individual coffee. There's a time and place where I would use coffee grounds mm -hmm. in a big, you know, filter yep. and sieve, or times I'd use an individual product. I'm really blown away, Bryce. This is really incredible. And number one, thank you for going ahead and taking me through the product. Yep. But everybody, make sure you go ahead and check out Asiga and make sure you find out a little bit more about the print pod solutions. Thanks.